Morning everyone, my name is Audrey. I am Stitchywitch42 here on FlossTube and over on Instagram. Today is Monday, the 18th day of March 2024. It is sign-up day for Pacific Northwest Stitch Summit put on by Acorns and Threads. There was a group of us this morning who were all sitting at our computers doing the things that we had to do and hoping to get in. Mine says pending. I, I can't do anything until I know one way or the other, so I've signed up. I know there's already somebody on the waiting list. That happened fast. Um, this is my channel about cross-stitch life, the universe, and everything. I don't know if I've said that. Sometimes saying the same things over and over again at the beginning of a video you kind of forget. Did I do that? Have I not done that? Hmm, I don't know. There is noise outside my house. They are doing the final layer of asphalt today. So there will be rumblings going by and beeping and all sorts of strange and bizarre sounds. Nothing I can do about it, but it's almost done. They did the first layer of asphalt last Thursday. It was nice. They're taking my days off and doing that. But it means I'm stuck at home today. I can't go anywhere. And I don't know why, but today it's making me feel like I have cabin fever. It's okay. I have things to do. I have things to do. I've got a lot of stuff to share. Which always surprises me because just a couple of days ago, I was thinking, I don't have anything to share, so why why do I want to put on a video? But now, this morning, I'm looking around and I have stuff to share, so I guess I'll do that. Um, let me see. 40 days until I retire. <coughs> 40 days until I retire, it's getting real, people. I have been doing so much prep work for retirement. I, I didn't know there would be so much prep work for retirement. I started the process on January 29th or 30th, whichever day was a Monday. Signing up for the Medicare, calling and getting the paperwork started for my pension, Calling and getting the paperwork started for my supplemental insurance. Last Monday, I called Fidelity to talk to them about rolling over my 401k into an IRA. I'm now waiting for more paperwork on that that has to be notarized. I got a second letter of the application for my pension from my union, and apparently this is a common thing. They do the paperwork twice. Is it to confirm that I'm me? I don't know. But it seems like every week there's something that I have to do, and it's like, who knew? There's all this prep work to retiring. The herd of butterflies? Oh man, it's hurting. Herding, not hurting, herding. Okay, let's talk about cross-stitch. This year, I am doing my 24 bats in 2024. It was a random comment I made on my video last year, and, and some people said, oh, that would be fun to do, and it stuck with me, and I'm doing it. I have my bag full of projects. This is a bag that um, I stole from Cheryl, one half of Stitching at the Sisterlies, when we were at a Mountain Stitchers meetup. I haven't made it to the last two of those simply because there have been other things going on. So I have been stitching on my 24 bats in 2024. One minute. I have this project roll made by Cheryl and I have been putting my finished pieces in here. 
I got a couple of them FFO'd last night and I finished one this morning. So the ones that I have not FFO'd yet are Halloween Doodles. This is the one with Ferret Face. If you saw the video, you know what I'm talking about. If you don't know who Ferret Face is, we can't be friends. We can. I'll just make fun of you. Then I have the Cauldron of Bats. I think this was my second project that I... I love this one. I love the colors in it, which kind of surprised me because I wasn't sure I was going to like them. And then the last one that I finished, and I don't think that I've shown this one to you, this is Bats by Styles and Stitches. This is the one that is done on the butternut squash fabric. So there is that. I think it's gorgeous. I'm going to just make it into a long skinny pillow like this. And I think that that will be really cute. And then I started a new one. The new one is Obviously, while I am prepping for retirement, I am not prepping for videos because I have not got anything ready to show you, as a good floss tuber should do. Whatever. This is A Study in Bats by Bad Stitch on Etsy. I am stitching this on piece of fabric. Let me get my journal. I am stitching this on a 32 count Lugana by Be Stitch Me called Cold Foam. When I started stitching this, um, Normally on 28 and 32 count, I stitch 2 over 2. I started stitching this one 2 over 2, and it was too heavy. Now I'm wondering if, because of the dyeing process that has actually shrunk up and is more like a 34 or 36, so I'm stitching 1 over 2, and this is where I'm at with it. I have four of the five bats done and I have started working on the outline of the book down here below. First of all, let's look at this fabric. This is gorgeous. This is the first time I've ordered this color and I will definitely be ordering it again. It has got like hints of lavender and a little bit of a green undertone to it. It is just beautiful, beautiful fabric. So this is project number seven of 24 bats in 2024. Now, again, I was asked by someone Am I counting the bats that I'm stitching as my 24 bats, or am I counting the projects? I'm counting my projects, simply because this one has five bats in it. Like I said previously, somebody could take a piece of fabric and stitch 24 bats on it, post it, and say, I'm done. And that's not really what I was, was aiming for. I was trying to get people to play along with me on Instagram and there are about six ladies that have been playing along with me and I'm learning things about hashtags that I didn't know that I needed to know because I'm doing this. One of my friends, her name is Linda, that's all I'm going to say, she messaged me and she said I've been stitching some bat projects 
but they won't show up when I put, try to use the hashtag 24 bats in 2024 or when I tag you, meaning me, in my post. So I went back and I looked and I finally went to her Instagram page and I realized her Instagram page is a private page. And while she was following me, I wasn't following her. So I asked her to let me follow her, and she did. So now when she posts them and she tags me, they show up on my feed, but they're still not showing up under the hashtag. My friend Dawn, who is Frosty X Stitch on YouTube and on Instagram, she sent me a message and said that if someone has a private account and they post using a hashtag, because it's a private account, it won't show up underneath the hashtag. I didn't know that. So, I didn't know that. So I'm doing things the old-fashioned way. I got out my notebook and I wrote down a list with these ladies' names, and when they post a picture to me saying, I've stitched bat number two, I've stitched bat number four, I've stitched bat number six, I'm going tick, tick, and tick. And come January next year, if anybody has completed 24 projects with bats in them, it could be a single bat, it could be multiple bats, but 24 projects, if you've stitched 24 projects in 2024 and you've tried to use the hashtag and you've tagged me, I'll add you to my list and I'll put you in my drawing next January for a gift certificate from Acorns and Threads for $24. But I'm having fun playing with these. I've already got my next two projects lined up and ready to go. Um, the next one that I want to do is one that Linda stitched. And this is from the Witchy Stitcher. It was a freebie for her sixth anniversary and this is Spooky Birthday Cupcakes. So this one down here, the cupcake with the bats around it, I have... Ah, there they go. All the noises. I have a piece of Bestitch Me Banshee, which is gorgeous. But I'm going to stitch that little cupcake on that. That is going to be my next project. I've got the colors in my paper sleeve here. And then the next one after that, I'm also going to be using the cold foam on it because I wanted more of a neutral color underneath there. This is, please don't summon the demons in the bathroom. My mind is drawing a blank. She has a YouTube video. Sarah, our Stitching Kingdom. She said she started laughing when she saw this and her husband walked in and said, oh, you've got to stitch that one. So I know she's ordered it too from Etsy. The designer is, the designer will be listed down below so I don't butcher her name. But those are my next two bat projects. Would you like to see a couple of bat fully finishes? Yesterday I was upstairs and I decided to work on getting a couple things finished and I decided that the little Halloween one, this is from a Just Cross Stitch magazine, would be perfect to make a little pin pillow. So here is Halloween, the bat's right there in the center, and of course I used bat fabric on the back. I still have my needle stuck in it from when I was sewing up the bottom opening. And you know something? My, my stitching on the bottoms are actually getting better. I'm thinking with this one, I'm going to go upstairs and go through my mill hill beads and I'm going to do a beaded edge around the side of it, but that's for a later date. 
Um, I want to pull out some of the purple and the green and the orange that are in this pattern and add it with some beads. I've done this before and I know that Helen did a tutorial um, on how I did it. She asked if I was going to do a tutorial. She's the one that does all the tutorials. Please, Helen, do the tutorial because she does great tutorials. She's getting to be just like Vana. It's, it's so nice. <laughs> but yeah, I'm thinking I'm going to put beads around this one, but it's going to wait until I'm in a beading mood for that one. The other 24 bats in 2024 project that I finished yesterday was the first one that I did. This was a free pattern from Doreen Jones. And I just simply did it as a large ornament. I was hesitant about doing this one because this design was so big. And then I remember my husband had some circular plexiglass templates. They're actually quilting templates. But he has a 4 inch, a 5 inch, and a 6 inch. And this pattern fit perfectly in the 5 inch. So I used the 6 inch to figure out how big to make my circle, my two pieces of mat board. And I love the way this turned out. I used Lady Dot chenille to trim it. And this is the one that I finished this morning, just gluing and sewing on the chenille. So those are my bat projects. I have to tell you, what they're doing outside right now is they are pouring the asphalt on the other side of the road. Last Thursday, they were doing this and they were on our side and in fact, they were right in front of the house. And I went out and I got Mark to come out and tell me about what they're doing. Mark's worked for a paving company for 20 years and he uses terminology that I just, I think it's like no matter where you work, you get used to saying something because it's work related for you. He says things that are work related for him, but they're interchangeable with other things, but they mean the same thing. Does that make sense? So last week when they're out there and they're doing this, I went and got him and I was asking him questions and he came out and he was telling me why they were doing this and what this is called and what's that called and it was kind of interesting to finally have an understanding of what my husband does. Okay. Going to bats, going back to bats in 2024. I'm going to do a giveaway on the pattern for the last one that I stitched. This is Bats by Styles and Stitches. Stitches and Style, I should say. If you're interested, just say Bats. Hopefully, I won't hide this one from myself like I did the last one. And I'm really hoping that, um, Barb, did you get it yet? Please be publicly subscribed. Please don't say the word free or giveaway or gift. Please be 18 or older so that you can legally send me your address. I will mail it anywhere because it's just a simple pattern. Say the word bats and I will let you know on my next video who will be winning this. Like I said, hopefully I won't hide it from myself like I did last time right where I put it so that I would remember it, because, yeah. All right. I got some more stitching done on Live Long and Prosper. I was up at first Thursday, and I was stitching on the piece from the Acorn Gathering. And then I got tired of that, so I switched over and I was stitching on this. 
so this is where it is currently at. I am about halfway through the third page and then there's maybe a fourth of a fourth of the fourth page. So there's not a lot left to do with this one. And I know that I want to have this one made into a bell pole because I want to hang it up here in my living room or upstairs in my library or I don't know. We'll find out when it's done because, you know, that's how it goes. Things tell me where they want to be, but that's not always where they end up. So this is where I'm working at here on the end. There is one tiny little stitch that's in the wrong spot. And I look at it and it's like, I know it's in the wrong spot. Does it make a difference? But there's one stitch that's in the wrong spot. I don't know what I think about that just yet. Rumble, rumble, rumble outside. Okay. Acorns and threads. Acorns gathering. We were given a pattern that was designed by Fox and Rabbit Designs. It's upstairs because that's where I left it. And if you've been watching me, if you've been watching my Instagram, you know that I decided that I was going to give it an Adams Family esque style. Somebody had suggested that to me when we were at Acorns Gathering, and I couldn't remember who it was because Julie gave me the mini thing needle minder, which I put on my name badge, and Anna was there, and I didn't, I couldn't remember who it was who suggested that I do that. It was Anna. So anyway, I've been posting pictures on Instagram when I've been working on this. There's supposed to be a plant on top of the house that has acorns for acorns and threads. I turn them into death cap acorns. What's a death cap acorn, you say? Well, it's an acorn that looks like a skull. And the lady that's standing next to the house I know you heard that one. The lady that's standing next to the house is supposed to have a blue dress and a hat on, and I couldn't do that because I wanted her to look like Wednesday in her Nevermore uniform. So I made mine into Wednesday. The house was supposed to be red. I didn't want a red house. In all honesty, I didn't want a stitch house, but I did. I know. Get over it, Audrey. Get over it. The door? Well, since I've stitched a gray house instead of a red house, I had to have a purple door. Because this year, that's another thing that's happening in 2024, is my front door will be painted purple. I've already talked with my son. He knows he's supposed to come down and help me take the door off the hinge while his dad's at work one day so that it can be a done deal when his dad gets home and Mark has no say in it. Because, yeah, I'm going to do that. So I'm going to have a purple door this year. I decided since I am turned this in from a red house into a gray house that it needed to have a purple door. And of course, as you know, thing needed to be included in this project. I think it was, I think this was part of the goodie bag that we got at Pacific Northwest Stitch Summit last year. It was a little booklet from Acorns and Threads and it's graph paper. So, 
I took the needle minder that Julie gave me and I traced it and I drew thing and then I tried to figure out a pattern to stitch thing. I did a practice thing and needed to work on it. So I have another pattern, my own pattern, for how to stitch thing. And I got it finished. And yesterday, upstairs, I made a folded flat mount out of my Adams Family-esque version of a gathering of acorns. There you are. My house is gray, stitched one over two, except for when I forgot that I was stitching one over two and I stitched part of it two over two. I have the purple door. I have the death cap acorns. I have a bowl full of ac death cap acorns and one that has fallen to its side over here. I have Wednesday right here and Thing right there. This is my version of A Gathering of Acorns by Fox and Rabbit Designs. They posted that they liked my changes to the pattern on Instagram. It was on Anna's post. I don't care. They said they liked what I was doing. I was excited. I was fangirling. Okay, I was fangirling. I love that so much. I used a Lady Dot chenille to trim it. I think it's algae. No, it's Ogden grass because it needed to be green. But I just love the way that looks. And on the back, <clears throat> I just used black and white ticking. All the fabrics that I have upstairs that I could have used, I thought this one, this one fit the theme most of all. So, that is my last fully finished. Now I'm going to show you my Alphonse Mucha because that's what I've been working on this morning. So, let me move the camera around and zoom in on her. So you can see here where I'm working on there working on her over here. I am down to the bottom edge of this row and this is the side of page one. I have been filling in this area up here and this area up here. I haven't been working on her as much as I should have but I am working on her and I'm gonna go back to working on her today. I'm about to run out of uh, battery on my camera. I'm going to wrap up this video. I got to show you all the things that I've been working on. I got to show you my finishes. I got to show you my Alphonse Mucha. Here's my other one. When this one gets done, I will take the, this one down with me so I can get my other one framed similar. And then they will both be hanging on the walls. I'm going to hold off on getting this video uploaded for a little bit because I want to go out and get some pictures of the road. And until I see you again, my friends, live long and stitch on. Thank you for coming and visiting with me today. Please like and subscribe. If you're interested in the giveaway, you know what to do. Bye-bye.